very lovely gentleman and his fiance they're going to get married soon yeah. they might invite us to their wedding please Maybe. do <laughs> what's your name isaac isaac nice meeting you my name is ali so how old are you uh 21 21 yeah okay that's good so tell me a bit about yourself before we like like what do you do like studying um, working no hobbies? i work with special needs kids oh, yeah wow. autistic children yes yeah, wow. so i'm a teacher with wow. lots of special needs how's that is it must be rewarding yeah i love it yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. great i'm from up north from huddersfield oh really so, um, yeah okay i used to live up north yeah you came um you came to my high school um did i when the Syrian kid was yeah oh, is, oh is yeah, it yeah, okay yeah, so, all right yeah, yeah yeah I remember that yeah I knew everyone involved in that scene yeah yeah, yeah yeah I remember that man that's good man wow interesting so how's life going yeah life's going, going really good F first yeah. first time because they need young people he's, yeah. he's not feeling well today yeah. <laughs> is the first time you speak speaking yeah first year first oh okay time, yeah. plan on coming back or yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> planning planning to go to uni study okay. philosophy okay interesting. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Or something like that. You so maybe yeah, you should give Mohammed a job if he comes. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'd yeah. love to. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, so you you said you became a Christian. Yeah, I became a Christian. When? So about when I was 15, 16. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Carry on, sorry, it's just yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was invited to church by my friend through the youth group. <clears throat> okay. Um, that's all. Where? Yeah, none okay. of my family are religious, so. They're not religious. No, not religious. Okay, all right. Interesting. So you, why did you choose faith, like, it's, or, or some sort of religion? Was there something missing? Yeah, it was the sense of belonging, sense of purpose, okay. um, the sense of truth. Okay. Okay. So, was you an atheist before? <coughs> yeah, I'd say atheist agnostic, maybe too young to truly know what I believe, but yeah. Yeah, because usually I think what it is is a lot of people who are atheists, they have this void in their life. Because if you think about it, you, you don't, there's, there's, more than the, there's more than the physical world. So, I think a lot of people really hit a wall where they're where they come to a point where they realize that you know what you know there's yeah. something that the they might not believe in the soul but there's something that innately they they need and we we say that that's the, the remembrance of god you know yeah. so it's interesting yeah, you like know c.s lewis he says you know humans have the desire for food there's food yes humans have the desire for sex there's yes. sex humans have the desire for meaning and truth yes so there must be truth and meaning out there. exactly yeah. exactly that's good that's good we call that the fitra in islam yeah. but your fitra was having an awakening so you wanted to find God. Okay, that's very good. That's very interesting. So you said you belong to a uh, Pentecostal yeah, church. Okay, yeah. tell us a bit about that for those who are, are not aware. So Pentecostalism, it's a, a denomination of Christianity where we believe in the gifts of the Spirit. So healing, prophecy, speaking in tongues. Mm. Um, yeah, not every Christian believes this. Uh, but yeah, it's contentious within Christianity. Some believe it, some don't. Okay, interesting. So that what that means is that they believe that they can heal in the name of the Holy Spirit? Yeah, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, that's yeah. interesting. Why don't they say, for example, in the name of Jesus or God? Or do they say all three? I, just so I know. Is it mainly through, centered around the Holy Spirit? Yeah, through the Holy Spirit, because that's the gifts of the Spirit. Mm. Yeah, it's okay. when on the day of Pentecost, when the Spirit came down, the apostles started speaking in tongues. Um, <coughs> And then through then, then the apostles went healing, um, mm. you know, preaching. Okay. The God. So the contention for some Christians is that that Holy Spirit was there then, but not now. Yeah. So the belief that it ceased around the end of the first century, that it was just for the apostles, just for the uh, to give the authority to the apostles. Okay. Um, so some Christians believe that it's continued and it's still for today. Others believe it ceased. So, but you, as a Pentecostal yeah, church, you believe yeah. that it's with us till this day. Yeah. That Holy Spirit. Okay. Interesting. So talking about miracles, um, we, we believe the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, performed miracles in the sense of, there were miracles in the sense of like, for example, the splitting of the moon. Uh, there was other miracles that he, he done, uh, for example, like for example, uh, the, the cure, like um, Ali radiallahu anh, his son-in-law, he had an eye issue, you know, so he, he cured the eye with the permission of God Almighty. So there was a lot of things he done, but there's also miracles because these miracles we can't really verify. Like if I'm speaking yeah. to an atheist, he would he, we can't prove to him that Jesus healed the sick yeah. and the blind and the, and gave rise to the dead with God's permission. We can't really do that. But we have something tangible, which is very interesting in Islam. Interesting in Islam is that the prophecies the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him made. So would you deem them as a form of miracles, like prophecies? So how I would deem it is, you know that in the end times people will look to signs and wonders instead of sound doctrine okay so i would say that the the miracles and wonders can be used to mislead people okay. as well as to verify so how do you differentiate then like how would we know through a person who is genuine and a person who is using these signs for other means That's a very good question um so 
if it's say I go I have a word from God God yeah. has spoke to me he's told me to go feed the poor yeah I think well you look at scripture God tells us to feed the poor say I go God has told me to go stab homeless people we go that's no way in scripture so we cast that out so okay. it has to align with scripture and with okay. the healings that's it probably the witnesses if the you know the bible says about having three witnesses okay all right so doesn't the bible say about you know that you would you would know the true prophets from the false ones by their prophecies and by, or the, by the fruits yeah, and by, by the fruits. their fruits yeah, yeah. you'll know a tree by its fruit <clears throat> okay <Yeah. clears throat> so for example there's a few things that the prophet muhammad peace be upon him said for example, these, these are prophecies. So the question I would ask is, how did he know them? Number two, when we say we bear them by their fruits, depends how we define that. So by their fruits, <coughs> it can be that, for example, we know that Islam, Islam's main fundamental message is that we worship God and God alone. Uh, I don't think anybody, any religious faith would say that is wrong. I would say that's a good fruit to, to, to turn people to God, uh, to tell people to not kill innocent people. That's a good fruit of God, I would say. To help the poor, the, give charity, um, to fast for God, um, to be good to your neighbor, good to the mother and father, etc. Um, and I believe in today's time, maybe Muslims are one of the only ones, and there's a lot of Christians as well, that hold on to these fruits, be it going against gay marriages yeah. in the context of, um, you know, it's like, like Islam is the only force that's left, which is fighting the evil forces. So I would personally say that's good fruits. I don't know what's your yeah, take on it. Well, you know, work with a lot of Muslims, we joke around, I say. Yeah. Christians, Muslims, we unite, solve these issues, then we sit and debate the truth. Yes, here. yes, that's you know, a good idea. Yeah, like yeah. We share the same morality, yes, we share, yes. you know, we're both people of the book. We've got, yes. Yeah, so we solve this and yeah. then we'll sit and, you know, debate Trinity, that's, then debate, yeah. you know, the prophet, you know, yeah. kind of the enemy of my enemy is my friend, that sort yeah. of thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, interesting. So we have that in the Surah Maida, wa ta'awana al birri wa taqwa, where Allah says, come together for righteousness. Yeah. So meaning that you're right, like the Christians, the Jews, we should all come together and against these, you know, LGBTQ things being sought, uh, taught to our kids at a young age. So we should come together about that. I definitely agree with that. What? Why would you say, like, um, you didn't become a Muslim, but you became a Christian? I know it's a big question, but if, you, if you feel comfortable... I thought a lot about this. Yeah. Um, yeah, it starts making you think about providence and will. If, if I was surrounded by Christians, mm. if I think, like, well, if I was from a Muslim-majority background, would yeah. I have become... Because, for example, I watched a um, debate with John Peets and Muhammad Hijab, Yes. And I'm looking at this thinking, if I'm from a Christian background, I'll probably agree with John Peter. If I'm from an Islamic background, mm -hmm. I'm going to believe, I'm probably going to agree with Muhammad Hijab. Because mm -hmm. I think these arguments, they can become almost so abstract that there's no way of truly proving them either way. Okay. I know you might disagree with that. Mm -hmm. but, okay. So I do think, I was like, yeah, is it just because, you know, God has placed me in a, from a Christian community and mm. that's why or is it because Christianity has more truth to it or mm. is the truth but okay interesting like me myself about 13 years ago I started looking into religion I used to read the Bible yeah. so I used to read the Bible I can remember um, and yeah I used to look into it in the context where I used to be in, like, in a relationship um, this was before Islam because we, we don't believe relationships are permissible but the girl that I used to be in a relationship with her mum was Christian she was white. She was half white, half Asian. So obviously I used to be very close with them. And I can remember they used to have a Bible in the house. And I used to, I used to celebrate Christmas with them. I celebrate Easter with them. And I, and I started reading the Bible. I can remember they actually, I went to visit them once and they reminded me of me, you know, they said, yeah, yeah. we remember you used to read the Bible, etc." So I was like, I was interestingly looking into it because uh, to me, it was like, wherever the truth is, I would like to follow the truth. Yeah. I don't want to follow my desires. I don't want to follow because my family come from a specific background. So I don't want to follow something just blindly. So to me, it was like, like you said, there are Christians who come from a Christian background who end up being Christian. There are Muslims who come from a Muslim background who end up being Muslims. I didn't want to be any of them. I just wanted to be someone who's seeking the truth. And like Jesus says in the Bible, that seek the truth and the truth shall yeah. set you free. And to me, it was like, I just want the truth. I don't, if it's Christianity, it's Christianity. If it's Islam, it's Islam. And I spent a good three and a half years looking into different religions, doing comparative religion. To me, the main thing that still stood out with Islam was, and to be honest, in the Bible as well, like, you know, when Jesus always, when somebody came to him and says, oh, good master, what must I do to get eternal yeah. um, uh, life? He said, why do you call me good? There is only one good and that is God. So to me, I was like, wow, that's interesting because here he's actually de-associating divinity to himself somehow, yeah? It can be read in different ways yeah. as well. 
And for example, when he went to the Mount of Gethsemane and he prostrated and he prayed, and I was like, well, who is he praying to? And you know, there's many things where he said, for example, in the Acts chapter 2, verse 22, he said, Jesus of Nazareth, a man chosen by God with wondrous miracles and signs, which God did by him and you are a witness to it. So I'm thinking, well, that's, that's, that sounds very close to Islam because it's a man approved by God, God sent him and he does wonders, miracles and signs by his permission and he's saying that you guys are witness to it. So to me, when I saw that, I was like, okay, this is interesting. There is monotheism in Christianity. But when I realized that the main fundamental doctrine, be it the Catholics, be it the pro 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 Protestants, Protestants yeah. or the Pentecostal. So the, 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 the thing is here is that when the divinity of Jesus was like a reality in the context of, okay, this is what they believe. I was like, oh, I don't know if I can believe that because to me to believe I knew innately before I, I was exposed to any religion that God cannot be a man. I, that, that notion, I, I couldn't accept it, like to me. So why is that? Because, because God, number one, it doesn't befit his majesty. Like I'm looking at his nature. So God has a nature. Within his nature, he cannot contradict his nature. So for example, can God make a rock so big that he himself can't lift? We know, we know, we know he can't. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 he can't. It's a paradox it's, in the class. Exactly. Process. It is yeah. not even a thing. The question is not even valid in itself. Because if he can't, yeah. he's not God. If he, if he could, he's not God. Yeah, so then so the question is, can God be God and man? Exactly. Because if so, he's man, so, he's not God. If he's God, he's not man. Exactly. And the thing is, what we do is like, sometimes Christians come and say, well, why are you limiting God? And I go, look, I understand, but can God cease to exist? We say no. no. So we say, okay, but we are setting some limits then. Now these limits doesn't degrade him, but honor him and glorify him. Because we say God cannot cease to exist. God cannot make a rock so big he can't lift. God cannot lie. So why do we come and say that God can be a man? Do you get what I'm trying to say? So why does yeah. the limits be like, okay, we, we both most of the Christians accept this, but why do we differ when God becomes a man? Hmm. I suppose it's the question of, he still, so he humbled himself to the form of man, but still kept his divinity. How is that possible? It's the divine mysteries of okay. the cross, okay. yeah. Which hmm. may, maybe it's not possible. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, why, so you don't think it's possible because of the, how you see the nature of God so, that so his he innate, can't contradict in his innate nature yeah. I know for example God cannot lie okay, yeah. because that goes against his nature yeah of the author of truth exactly yeah, yeah. so therefore I say then how can I then say he can go against his very deep nature which is becoming something he's not now with lying is something he would not do now when it comes to his deep innate nature he's basically for him to create the whole entire universe and then become like what a speck in the universe. Yeah. Just imagine that, you know, there was I was watching a video, the video that shows our planet compared to another planet. Yeah. And it was, it was, it was, yeah. it was it, that to me was amazing. Like yeah. it, 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 it increased my belief in God in such yeah. a way. Yeah. So I was thinking, imagine that one who created the creator that created all of that, becoming into a little planet, and not only that, coming out of the womb of a woman. And to me, it was yeah. like it's a, a dishonorable thing to us. To me, I see that as beautiful. That yeah? this God who created all these galaxies and stuff yes. is willing to come and walk among us to wipe okay. away our tears, to get down and wash our feet, like he says. I've not come to uh, to be served, but to serve. That you know, God loves us enough mm. that He is willing to do that. Yeah. Okay. To me, what that means is that what we're seeing is that, for example. We are getting God and saying that in order for him to be merciful towards us, he has to go against his nature, come unto earth, wash our feet. It sounds, look, I'll be honest with you, it sounds very good to the ear. Yeah. However, the point is this, for us to say that, for example, you believe in blood sacrifice. Yeah. In Islam, we don't believe that God has to do any of that. God just forgives. He doesn't need to become a man. He doesn't need to come and wash my feet. He doesn't need to come do any of that. He forgives sins by him forgiving sins. But in Islam, I mean, in Christianity, it's no, we require blood sacrifice. But in Islam, we believe God is so merciful that he acknowledges and knows you're going to sin and fall short. All he says is, turn to me and repent and I'll forgive you. Yeah. So to me, that sounds more, not, not that one is the other, like, and this, it, 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 truth is not based on what sounds more beautiful. Yeah, yeah. But the point is this, if God can forgive my sins without in, an innocent person dying, or himself dying, or his son dying, to me, that is more justice because no one had to die. You committed a sin, you repent to God and God forgives your sin. And not only that, he turns those bad deeds into good deeds. Yeah, so how I would say this is that I believe the universe is here for God's glory. And that yeah. when God made the universe, his plan was, how do I get glory? And he, in his foreknowledge and infinite wisdom, saw that the way he would gain the most glory is by himself 
setting rules that we cannot keep, the standards of God, us failing, but he himself coming to, to save us from them. Okay. Because uh, then I will live, I know you would say in, in Islam if you would say, but I will live for all of eternity on my knees, worshipping that God, mm. you know, that he, he took the punishment that he was fully innocent and he died for a fully guilty man and then yeah. and his righteousness is imputed onto me mm. like to me i see that again it might just because it sounds good to my ears but i see that as wow like so 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 just once again you said that he, the glory of the universe you said yeah and then you said that the fact that we cannot um so if god knows that we are not going to be able to stick in, stick to the laws that he's put in place yeah see in islam there's a hadith of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He said, if mankind was not to sin, God Almighty would wipe them out, bring forth another nation that sins but repents. Now, the key here is that it's not that God wants us to sin. He acknowledges that we're going to be sinners. But he makes it, there's a key thing here, which he says, but they sin but repent. Yeah. Meaning, and Allah says this in the Quran, only the disbelievers dis uh, despair in the mercy of God. So meaning to us, the if somebody comes to me and says, I have killed 7,000 people, oh my God, that's a terrible thing. Because Allah says in the Quran that to kill one soul is as if you kill the whole of humanity. Yeah, yeah. Now, and he says, I believe God will never forgive me. I go, you've just committed a bigger sin. 7,000 people he killed yeah. was terrible. It was wrong. But the fact that you have just now questioned what God has said, Allah says he's the most merciful. In the whole of the Quran, every single chapter except one starts with Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of Allah, the most merciful, the very merciful. So God has given that name to himself. He could have been like God Almighty, the most re re uh, revenge seeking God. He yeah. chose mercy. For some reason, he chose mercy. And that name, he repeats it. And God Almighty says that he's the most merciful. Therefore, for you to come and say, God won't forgive my sin. You're trying to say basically, God, you have said you're the most merciful. I don't believe you. Yeah. I believe you can't forgive my sin. We Where say. Fit into that. Okay, good. So what we say is God is also the most just. So for example, that we believe that's the reason why we say in Christianity for God to kill an innocent person, killing himself goes against his nature. Him sending a son um, to die for the sins of the world again is like we've not, we believe God doesn't beget nor is he begotten. It goes, it's dishonoring him. Number three, if he picks a man, he kills for the sins of the other people, that's injustice. So what we say is that perfect justice is what? Nobody dies for nobody's sins. Every person who, person has sinned is accountable for their own sin and they will be questioned. But eventually entering paradise is not by one's good works, but it's by the grace of God. We believe that. So we don't believe that I'm going to stand in front of God and be like, I've been an amazing Muslim and I've prayed and I've fasted yeah. and I've given charity. You're going to go, I'm here because yes, Allah be merciful. Because God says in the Quran, when Allah talks about the people who are going to go hellfire, He says, what they earned yeah they earned it yeah same we but, say but god doesn't say that about paradise okay. when it comes to paradise god doesn't say this is what they earned so because almost, paradise is gifted to you. Yeah. you there's nothing you can do to receive grace grace is given to you which is common because a lot of yeah, christians have this misconception yeah, yeah. they think we believe that it's only yeah, the works, works. Yeah, yeah. and in the book of james it says that like yeah, works with no faith is, dead. is yeah, no yeah. dead yeah so what we see is to me that's justice and how we fix it perfectly like mercy and justice Nobody's yeah. dying for no one since, basically. Makes sense. Yeah. 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 Like, I'll say this, like, as no, a Christian, the yeah. Trinity yeah. is the hardest yeah. to defend and also to understand. Mm. You know, we would say maybe it's because, you know, God is infinite and we're finite trying to get, wrap mm. our heads around this. Mm. But then you would say, you know, maybe it's hard to understand because it doesn't make sense. Mm. So, you know, it makes sense to me, brother, anyway. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, no, it is. It is. Like, like you yeah, said, look, at the end of the day, yeah. the thing is, the course of here, and by the way, how are you doing? Yeah, hi. Yeah, yeah, nice to yeah, be here. But he's my good friend. We have, uh, yeah, no, like we, you said, we were talking about joining forces together about LGBTQ. Yeah. Oh, so, was this the yeah. No, no, no. That, that was another discussion oh, yeah, we had. No, no, so we've already is, started yeah, joining yeah, forces yeah, here. Yeah, we're talking about the Abrahamic people. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. We don't turn our eyes on the influence of Satan when yes. he is going for our children. Yes. And us as fathers, brothers, sons, yes. are the shield God has provided yes. to protect our families from the influence of evil. Yeah. If, and this is what convicted me. If I'm down here trying to convert somebody to my religion, yeah. but at the same time- well, I'm, I'm losing my child. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly, my child. Yeah. My religion will stand against me on judgment day. Yes, yes. And this is, an, yeah. I, I feel an urgency yeah. the way things are going. I really do believe we're living in the reign of the Antichrist. And yeah, I really yeah. believe that when God looks at the well, sorry, the size of the tsunami of sin that is being put into children to drag them down to hellfire, He will look on us who claim to yeah. know Him. Yes. 
to stand up out the trenches. So, exactly. I, you know, I welcome Ali, yes. anyone of faith, yeah. or even of not faith, who has a moral guidance yeah. given to him by God yeah. and without him it's, knowing. We need to, we and he was to, saying the same thing before oh, you yeah. came. Yeah, yeah, we need yeah, to yeah, promote yeah. and support each other's right to worship. Yes. We're in an increasing secular society. Yes. You know, we, we have these conversations by promoting and supporting each other. You know. Exactly.